The session on European Parliament elections, one question gets asked basically more than anything to this community. And sometimes, to be honest with you, it's a real pain in the ass. Uh, is this the Russians? R reporter calls. Hey, I just saw something on Twitter. Is this the Russians? Or a policymaker calls and says, hey, Somebody just sent me a strongly worded email. I think it's probably the Russians. And you say, I don't know, it, it might just be your constituent. You should probably talk to them. Uh, so for this last session, uh, we're going to go through exactly why that is such a hard assessment, why you don't want to jump to conclusions and say, oh, yeah, absolutely, a thousand percent, that's definitely, definitely, definitely the Russians. Uh, you should do something about that. So what I would like to do for our last session is welcome uh, two of our uh, stalwart researchers from the DFR lab, uh, Nika, who is part of our team from the Baltics, and Eto in Georgia. Please help me welcome the stage, Nika and Eto. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for staying this engaged, because we should go through some pressing issues like meddling, uh, manipulation, um, interference, I won't even ask you how many times have you heard these words during the last couple of years. The central principle of democracy that people should be able to select for themselves the leaders that meets their political views the most has once again come under the challenge, threatening to undermine our hard-won freedoms. Um, in 2017, all the 17 United States intelligence agencies published their report. Um, it was nearly unprecedented and unclassified, um, accusing Russia of meddling in 2016 US presidential elections. European Union officials have published a report accusing Russia of orchestrating in continued and sustained disinformation campaign during the last May elections. Frankly, um, when we started to discuss the title of this session uh, between us, um, Is This the Russians? I was like, so I come from Georgia, and I was like, of course it is Russians. Like, why are you even asking me? Why do you put the question mark after this title? But then my professional side overcame um, my um, emotional one, uh, which is to verify everything before one makes claims. And this is exactly what you will do in the next 15 minutes. You probably find envelopes on your tables. You do, I'm sure of that. And when you unseal an envelope, you'll see an answer sheet. So what we want you to do is to look at the case studies that are labeled with letters and spend some time discussing matching the corresponding evidence that's underneath the case study that we present to tell, was it the Kremlin? And here's a very crucial difference, because Russians are the nationality, the nation, and the Kremlin is the government. So can you tell that that was a government or not, and why do you think so? You will have 10 minutes to discuss it, and then we will present the right answers. So the countdown starts now. Of course, it is Russian.
so you should feel that. <laughs> Thank you.
next to the first case. The Facebook page of TikTok Media, page sharing interactive, uh, entertaining videos. Who think it was the Kremlin? Raise your hands. Who think it was not? Hmm. <laughs> OK, there are a few, a few hands. But yeah, the great majority uh, said it right. It was the Kremlin. How do we know that? If you go to the About section, though there is not much information about the origin or who owns the page, we can check the domain where the email address is hosted. And when we do that, we find out that it's Rasia Sivonia, media uh, company that is owned and financed by the Russian government. The next case. The next one about Yurmala. So who thinks that it was Russians? Just raise your hands. OK, quite a few. So who thinks that it was not Russians? OK, interesting. Pardon me? No. <laughs> You, you know, we, we live in a hostile environment. <laughs> so uh, this is actually Russians. So how do we know that it's Russians? So this Yurmala page, they were posting some entertaining uh, content together with some weather forecast. But the interesting thing here is cross-posted video. So what does it mean? So the page cannot cross-post video if it, is, if it doesn't have a confirmation from the main page that is posting video. So basically, it means that the, the first source was Sputnik, and the Yurmala page was cross-posting videos from Sputnik. It makes this page um, seem Russian. So yes, it's Russian. Russians. And I was happy. A small add-on. This page was the part of the major Facebook takedown in January part of this Sputnik pages takedown. This was one sneak, sneak peek in their behavior, what they did. Next example, Sputnik Latvia. Is it uh, Kremlin-owned Sputnik? Who think that it is Kremlin? Raise your hands. OK. Who think that it is not Kremlin? OK, a bit more hands. So this was not the Kremlin. How can you tell that? If you spend enough time on Sputnik, you start to recognize its logo and notice that the last K is reversed. And additionally, the About section of the page that we presented as the evidence says, real Sputnik am I not? And since you had your devices on with Wi-Fi, you could check that there is not much Sputnik content posted as of recently. So this is satire page that wanted to make a little fun of real Sputnik. OK, next one. This is one of my favorite cases. Who thinks that it's Russians? Nasha Kanad, OK. Some people think. So who thinks that it's not Russians? Nice, nice. So yes, it wasn't Russians. So what is this Nasha Kanada newspaper? It's one of the very famous Twitter accounts that is posting um, using humor. They are exposing everyday injustices that are taking place in Russia. So basically, they are posting everything in Russia on a daily basis in Russian. But this page, uh, Twitter page, and the newspaper was created by Russian-speaking guys who live in Canada. And just make sure to follow them. They are really cool. And the last case, Newsfront, media outlet, writes in six different languages about Russia, Ukraine, Crimea, Lugansk, Donetsk. Um, is it the Kremlin? OK, those that think that it is. Who think that it isn't? Some like doubtful? Oh, the, the, there is a hand. OK, so it was the Kremlin. And it went publicly known in 2017 when a whistleblower uh, talked with tight uh, German newspapers journalists and revealed how the media outlet is operated and how it's financed by the Kremlin. So well done, Digital Sherlocks. Yeah. <laughs> with a little uh, mix of uh, critical thinking and awareness of our own confirmation bias powered by digital tools, we can tell uh, 
the adversary and avoid, avoid uh, mistaken attributions. So thank you very much for the exercise, and I will welcome Graham Brookie to wrap up the day. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. I don't need it. Thank you.